So who am I? My name's Dale Lyman. I'm a chef instructor. I've been here at William Anglis for 17 years. Uh, 20 years industry experience in sort of fine dining restaurants in Melbourne, Scotland, uh, Brisbane. I mean, food is my passion and I love sharing food. I love sharing knowledge and I like experimenting as well, which is why I got into this one. So um, I do a lot of things at William Anglis as well as run the sort of bistro restaurant, uh, which is sort of the stage two or three level of our uh, commercial cooks. And once they've learnt the methods and soup stocks and sauces and those sort of things, then they come into the restaurant and we do, it's almost like a finishing school, I guess. It's putting all those skills into practice and they learn how to serve real customers and hopefully then go out and get a real job. And part of my role at Anglis has been like an industry engagement or industry liaison. So I've worked closely with uh, Melbourne Uni before where we did a dry aid sheep project. Uh, put together a booklet for Meat and Livestock Australia uh, for recipes in America to try and get them to eat more Australian lamb. And I run lots of masterclasses, field trips. Uh, we go and pick mushrooms in the forest at Wood End and those sort of things. So we do lots of other things that I are yeah, really in touch with industry and try to bring industry and that sort of extra bit of um, knowledge to the students that are interested. So, what are we going to start with? We're going to start with cured ocean trout. First thing I need to do is make a cure. So I've got some salt, some sugar. We have got some sea parsley. And some, sorry, that's the sea celery all chopped up and that's the sea parsley. I've got some uh, orange rind and lemon rind. So they can go in, and in here I've mixed up some lemon myrtle, star anise myrtle, and a bit of pepperberry. So these here, I've used these in lots of different ways in these recipes. In this one, I've just ground them up in a coffee grinder, and you can grind them up and sieve them in, or in this case, it doesn't matter because we're gonna be brushing the herbs off or the spice off, so they're just in their hole. So we mix all that together and that becomes our cure. So the salt and the sugar are going to draw the moisture out of the salmon, or the ocean trout rather, and the spices and herbs are going to flavour that. So what we need to do is get some plastic wrap, and I'm going to lay some of the cure mixture down and form it into roughly the shape of the salmon. And this piece here is about 400 grams, so that's about half the recipe. So I've actually cured the whole center piece and the tail piece. Then we're going to put the cure mixture on top. And what we need to do now is wrap it so that the moisture that it's going to bring out doesn't escape. And also we want to wrap it reasonably tight so that it presses all of the moisture and water out of the salmon, or ocean chuck, keep calling it salmon, ocean chuck. That goes back into the fridge overnight. Here's one I prepared earlier, I like saying that. All right, so once that's been in there for about 12 hours, two hours will do a light cure, 12 hours will do a pretty solid cure. Then what we'll need to do is take that off. So I've opened up the plastic. We're going to get rid of all of that. And now we need to wash off the mixture. So you can see the sea parsley, sea celery, lemon myrtle is sort of stuck to it a little bit. And the flavour, it really worked well, I was really, or I am, and you can let me know when you do the tasting what you think. I'm really happy with this cure. We've played around with lots of different cures for ocean trout or Atlantic salmon. Some of them have got gin in it, some of them have got, uh, most normally have sort of uh, dill and citrus. So we've played on that with the um, sea parsley and the sea celery, and then we've used the lemon myrtle and the anise myrtle and cinnamon myrtle. 
have given it a little bit of an extra flavor as well. And here's one I prepared earlier, earlier. So this one here, we leave the skin on it and that helps hold it together. The other thing I had to do was pin bone it. So I get a little pair of tweezers and take those fine bones up along the top part of the ocean chart. Um, by leaving the skin on it also helps me to slice it. So to slice it, nice sharp knife and just, I've got quite a large, what we call a large face on the ocean trout, so it's a large area that I'm slicing off. And then I'm going down to the skin. If I go too far, I'm gonna get you know the bloodline and that discoloration, that's okay. We don't wanna waste all of that, but you can just trim off the bloodline and a bit where it's really close to the skin. So that's our ocean trout. Ready to go, sliced. And now we'll pop it all together. So I'm going to serve it on a nice black plate and I'm just going to arrange it, I guess similar to a carpaccio or something like that where it's around the center of the plate. It's nice and thin, thinly sliced because it's quite rich. And I think really we'd be serving maybe 60 grams as an entree. And it would really be an entree. It's probably not something you're going to eat as a main course. So that's our ocean trout laid on my plate. So I have some pickled shallots where I've just added a little bit of vinegar, uh, sugar, salt, slice the shallots, put it on um, the hot mixture on top, let them sit. I've also got the kaikala or the um, pig's face. And I've just sliced that really finely and sprinkled it with a little bit of Japanese vinegar because it's quite sort of bitter, gets at you at the back of the throat a little bit. So with a little bit of vinegar in it, it sort of cuts that and is a lot nicer to eat. So my two favourite things out of all this testing has been the lemon myrtle, I use it in everything, uh, and the river mint. The river mint is fantastic. And I'm now a big fan of the sea parsley. It's got a really nice sort of subtle flavour but it's still got something in there to, you know, you know it's a nice flavour. So all of these dishes were really experimentation, I guess. It was just, so how can we use this? What can I do? So I blanched some spinach, some sea parsley and some sea celery and refreshed it in ice water. So quickly blanched it, refreshed it, brought some oil up to 40 degrees and then I put the, the celery the parsley and the spinach into the oil and let it sit and then I blitzed it up and put it through like a coffee filter uh, and what we've come up with is this beautiful green oil and it's got a little bit of sharpness to it from the sea celery and the parsley but it's a really lovely colour. Um, the other things we're going to use to garnish this one is some salmon roe and some um, lemon myrtle mayonnaise. So I just use the Japanese mayonnaise. I grind the lemon myrtle leaf up in the coffee grinder. The one thing I've sort of discovered is if I cut out that stem in the middle of the leaf, that makes it grind up a lot better. Also, if I chop that up first, and then I don't have so much fibre left when I've blitzed it up in the coffee grinder and it's pretty easy to push through a sieve and uh, get a nice fine powder. So you don't always need a fine powder. For this garnish, I use a fine powder, but for the cure, it's fine to have it sort of chopped up rough. So we are going to put a little bit of oil over our sea or our river mint and our sea parsley. We do a few dollops of the mayonnaise. We'll pop a little bit of shallot over it. And the cake colour or pig's face. We've got two types here. 
One of them's quite bitter and the other one's quite nice. So the smaller one is a lot nicer to eat. And my herbs. And I just put a little bit of the oil on there just to soften them up or make them a little bit more digestible, give them a little bit of uh, sheen as well. And we can put our oil over the top. Just a few little drops. And a little bit of the salmon roe. And unless I've forgotten something, I think that's about it. What I could do is put a little bit of powder on the top. What have we got here? A little bit of the lemon myrtle. And a little bit of pepper berry. Or well, actually, so I'll explain that as well. So this is just a lemon myrtle leaf, which I've ground up and then I sieve it and give a nice fine powder. And also I've got the pepper berry leaf. So I've just used the leaf of the pepper berry tree or bush, uh, ground it up the same, and then I sieve that on there. The pepper berry leaf is quite, uh, has a little bit of heat to it. So just a small sprinkle of that is enough. And I think now I'm complete. So the next one we've done is a San Choy Bao. Um, the approach I've taken with this sort of development, product development, recipe development, is use familiar ingredients, familiar products, and just and techniques, and just switch in the native stuff. The other thing I've sort of is I start off with a little bit and add more and more and more. If you were going to use, you know, a, say, a cumin in something, you might use a teaspoon. If I'm going to use pepper berry in place of the cumin, I'd probably use start off with an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon and then see how it tastes. So less is more when it comes to these native um, ingredients. So San Choy Bao is a nice simple one. Let me get this warmed up a little bit. I've just um, sautéed off a little bit of onion, some carrot, some ginger, some garlic. Uh, then we've added the chicken to that and we've cooked it down till it's nice and white. So the onion, the carrot, get that till it's a little bit soft and tender. Then we add the ginger and the garlic, cook that for another minute or so. Then we flavour it with some macadamia nuts and some soy oyster sauce, a little bit of Chinese cooking wine, and then just thicken it a little bit with corn flour. So it's not really thick, it's just actually got a bit of a shine to it. So it's a pretty traditional San Choy Bao, but we've added the macadamia nuts to give it that sort of you know, Australian feel. We, the spice I've used is the native pepper ground. So I should have some of that here. So again, I've tried not to do it chef chef-like. What I've done is I put my oven on at home. Uh, so my garden now is full of pepperberry, uh, lemon myrtle, anise myrtle, sea parsley. My wife thinks I'm obsessed, um, which she's correct. Um, and what I did is turn my oven on to 80 degrees Celsius and I just put them on a flat tray, pop them in and they dry up like that. So that was overnight and they've just dried the pepper leaf and then just grind it in the coffee grinder and if I was going to put it over something, a sieve it, or in here, I did just sieve it into that uh, dish. We've used a little bit of lemon myrtle, of course, and this time I ground, I dried the lemon myrtle uh, and ground it. Yep. So same as using it fresh, the only difference is I dried the leaves out first, then I ground them up. So once this mixture is cooked, we're just rather than using coriander, so I guess the pepperberry and the lemon myrtle are in, instead of you know, maybe some of the Asian spice you would use, and the river mint is instead of the coriander that you might put on it last. 
And the River Mint is probably my, how many favourites have I got now? I think that's my fourth favourite. The River Mint is just beautiful. I've got that growing in my garden too now. And it's got a really beautiful pepperminty sort of florally flavour. And in this, it works really well. So I've just tossed the River Mint in at the last minute. And we're going to simply fill up our little lettuce cups. Now these would be perfect as an appetiser. Uh, they could be a nice little entree or even a light dinner. Okay. And you could give them a little squeeze of lemon if you wanted to. And we could even top that with a little bit of the sea parsley if you wanted to. Just give a couple of little sprigs of the sea parsley. And an extra sprig of the river mint on each one. And that is our nice little sanchoy bao, a little appetizer.